Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today is going to be the greatest day of your life. It could be the spookiest day of your life too. You know, today I thought I'd kind of get off track here a little bit and maybe we talk about some spooky, fun, and surprising Halloween facts you may not know that will enhance your supercomputer and hopefully your holiday Halloween fun. You know, whether you're a fan of Halloween or curious to discover what the event is all about, this video is going to be for you. I am going to talk about some amazing truths about Halloween. Did you know that Halloween has its roots in an ancient Celtic festival? Now that's true. The Halloween holiday is a borrowed concept from the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, which happened about 2,000 years ago. Uh, the Celtic people in Europe held celebrations to welcome the harvest as well as mark the end of summer. You know, they lit bonfires and donned costumes to ward off ghosts during the festivities. Uh, the name Halloween was influenced by religion. Now, Pope Gregory III set November 1st as a time to honor saints in the 8th century. The day was given the name All Saints Day. It is the beginning of the liturgical um, year in some Christian faiths. So during this period, they commemorate saints, martyrs, and all the departed faithful. Now in the Celtic religion, Samhain was the eve of All Saints Day. So they began calling it All Hallows Eve, or later, Halloween. Henceforth, the name spread throughout the world, and we've called it Halloween ever since. Jack O'Lantern came from an Irish folktale. No, it's true. The story told about an Irish man named Stingy Jack. He invited the devil to have a drink with him. True to his name, Jack had no intention of paying for his drink. Furthermore, he managed to convince the devil to turn himself into a coin so that Jack would use the coin to pay for their drinks. So, because of his trickery, Jack was never allowed to enter heaven or hell when he died. The folklore adds that the devil took pity on Jack and gave him an ember of coal to light his turnip lantern. He used the lantern to roam between heaven and hell for eternity, hence the name Jack of the Lantern or Jack O' Lantern. That's kind of cool, huh? You know, Halloween grosses second after Christmas in the United States. Americans spend during Halloween about $6 billion every year. This commercial success makes it, makes it the second largest commercial holiday after Christmas in the country. Now, did you know trick-or-treating dates back to the medieval era? The practice of trick-or-treating traces its way from Scotland and Ireland as early as the 16th century. They called it guising, which was derived from disguising. Uh, the tradition involved going from house to house at Halloween and putting on a performance in exchange for food or treats. In modern-day Halloween, children often dress in their costumes and ask for candy. Yet they hardly put up any performances. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, maybe they're not dancing for their candy anymore. But um, how fun is it to open the door and see the kids and their smiling faces? It truly brings joy to their hearts. And it brings joy to my heart to have so many kids come to the home. This year, the Vandergraaf family is giving out sticky hands. Remember the sticky hands? It was in the shape of a hand and had a little cord on it. And you could flick it out and grab a piece of paper with it and pull it back. Or you can annoy your brother or sister with it. Oh, it was fantastic. When I was a kid, we loved those. Hard to find, but Kristen and I actually went out this year on Amazon, bought a bulk of them. So in Fort Collins, Colorado, many children are going to have sticky hands tonight. And we can't wait to give them out. Can't wait to see all the costumes either. It's going to be so much fun. Did you know that New York City hosts the world's largest Halloween parade? You know, New York's annual Greenwich Village Halloween Parade tr attracts over 2 million spectators and thousands of participants every single year. And you know, and it's a grand event now, but it began small. It was started by Ralph Lee, who is a resident of the area and a puppeteer. 
and Lee's purpose was to give children and his pals a playful Halloween walk from house to house. Local theaters took up the idea and began staging the celebrations in large capacities. Since then, the event has kept growing every single year. So, if you're in the New York area, that might be something fun for you to do with your family tonight. It's cool. <clears throat> um, children's Halloween costumes are superheroes and princesses. You know, the popular Halloween costumes for children consist of superheroes for boys and princesses for girls. And adult costumes most often represent witches. Additionally, animal costumes are also available. For instance, in 2019, the National Retail Federation announced that the popular costume for dogs was a pumpkin. That's awesome. I tell you what, we have a little turkey here. He's a, he's a little shorty. I could only imagine him dressed up like a pumpkin. It would be hilarious, and we would all get hours of fun with that little dog. He is our love. But I tell you what, that's fun. Do you know anybody in your life that dresses their animals up for Halloween? I think it's cool. You know, it's a fun thing. Everybody gets involved. And this is kind of a great day to kind of escape and, you know, get into character and just relax a little bit and be with your family. Talk with them. Spend time. And it's also a great night to get out and go for a walk as a family. You can walk with your kids as they go door to door. It's a great time to have conversation. And, you know, it's just a lot of fun. I love this evening. It's going to be great. And I can't wait for it. Did you know that the Irish popularized Halloween in the United States? No, it's true. Around the 1840s, the Irish fled the country due to the potato farming famine. And after they settled in the United States, they continued to practice their traditions such as Halloween. It then spread to different parts of the country and became the most se second most popular holiday in America. So it's cool. I love that. And on top of that, during those initial years, Halloween was centered on ghosts, pranks, and witchcraft. But in the late 1800s, Halloween in America morphed into a holiday more about community and neighborly get-togethers. Thus, beginning the 1900s Halloween parties for children and adults... And that became the preferred way to celebrate the day. It's true. You know, in our neighborhood, we were actually going to have a big get-together this year. But, I don't know if you knew, in Colorado, it's already snowed. And we've already got some really, really, really cold weather. So, they've actually canceled the festivities for a later date. I think they're on hold right now. But, whenever it does come back around, I'm going to... I think our kids will keep their costumes. That way we have the ability to jump in and be a part of the community. You know, pumpkin carvings for Halloween actually began in the United States. No, it's true. Vegetable carvings for Halloween were practiced in Ireland for many centuries. Potatoes or turnips were used. When the Irish moved to the United States, they discovered the pumpkin and began carving it on Halloween. I think it's cool. Uh, we did carve pumpkins this year. Did you carve pumpkins? This is, my kids are getting a little bit older. I really cherished it this year as they sat at the kitchen table and and did all their pumpkin carving without me. You know, in past years, I would have to get it started for them and help them come up with design ideas. And, well, I tell you what, my kids are getting older now and it's tough, right? Um, I love them so much and I just really cherished this year because... I don't know how many more years they're going to be interested in doing this. I hope we can keep it going forever. But, you know, like with most things, change is something that does occur. So I'm going to have to be adaptive as we move forward. But uh, the fastest pumpkin carving set a Guinness World Record. You know, in 2013, Stephen Clark of New York earned an entry in the Guinness Book of World Records. Clark carved a jack-o'-lantern in 16.47 seconds in October of 2013. Hence, he made the world record as the fastest pumpkin carving ever made. You know, 16.47 seconds. Do you think you could beat that? Don't try. Or if you do, please be very, very careful with what you cut your pumpkin with. I don't want anybody to get hurt. But uh, 16.47 seconds, I tell you what, that must have been some type of an effort. I wonder if there's a YouTube video out there that shows him carving that pumpkin. 
I might have to check that out a little bit later. Did you know that World War II did affect trick-or-treating? During the war period, there was a sugar rationing and that reduced sugar-related products. And until the war ended, Halloween remained a lesser practiced tradition. After the war, everything about the festival returned to its original state. Anything that involves children and candy is inevitably going to come back. The kids are going to demand it, right? <laughs> Did you know that magician Harry Houdini died on Halloween? Now, I didn't know this until recently, but the renowned magician died on October 31st, 1926 in Detroit, Michigan. He apparently suffered from an appendicitis and less than two weeks before his death, Houdini challenged a group of students to try the strength of his stomach muscles. He claimed they were strong enough to withstand blows. This prompted one of the students to punch him in the stomach thus rupturing his appendix, which unfortunately poisoned his system. Though he was operated on, he did succumb to the injury on Halloween in 1926. Um, the Monster Mash was a Halloween hit tune in the 1960s. This is awesome. I, we play this song every year when we're carving pumpkins, but I don't like the new ones. I like the old one. I like the old, if there's an old one you could find on YouTube, and it's actually Bobby Boris Pickett who sings the Monster Mash, and it's kind of an old cartoon uh, music video from the 1970s or 80s. But it's my favorite, and we play it every single year while we carve pumpkins over and over and over again. We'll probably play it tonight outside on our front porch when we're waiting for children to show up. It's I love this song. But the original Monster Mash was, in fact, sung by Bobby Boris Pickett, and it topped the Billboard charts in the 1960s to the 70s as the ideal Halloween tune. The song was adapted into a movie of the same name and released in 1995. Did you know it's the only it's the only Halloween song ever to reach number one on the billboards? That's right. Um, in October of 1960, I the name or the uh, the date actually. Um, I can't remember the date right now, but if you look it up, you'll be able to get it. But it did actually top the Billboard charts, and it was the number one song in America. I thought that was kind of cool. It just shows the power of Halloween. People are really involved in the holiday, that's for sure. Did you know that Hocus Pocus became a Halloween classic in 1993? Now, most people know the Walt Disney Masterpiece is celebrated as a Halloween classic movie, it was released in 1993 and the sequel, Hocus Pocus 2, followed in September of 2022. And as you know, candy sales are always way up during Halloween. According to a Forbes article dated October 24th, 2022, Americans buy about 600 million pounds of candy each Halloween season. This translates to 3.4 pounds consumed by an average American at related Halloween events each year. That's a lot of candy. 3.4 pounds per person? Wow. And to add on, over 10% of annual candy sales take place on the days preceding Halloween. It totals about $2 billion in sales. And chocolates are the most preferred sweets according, or they account for about $1.2 billion in total candy sales each year. Sugar candy accounts for about $680 million. And the magic and mystery that surround Halloween are definitely undeniable, yet it is one of the most cherished and much anticipated celebrations throughout the globe each year, especially for children and adults alike. Who doesn't like to dress up and have a good time? You know, I hope that these facts have made Halloween a little bit more interesting for you this year. The one thing I do want to re recommend is that you spend time with your families today and your children. Realize that your children are just miniature adults. Children have the exact same emotions. Their brains think the same way adults' brains do. Children are just little adults. And it would mean the world to your kids today if you just kind of stepped out of your normal daily routine 
and spend some time specifically focused on them. You know, be a parent, be be available, and be ready to be a part of the fun tonight. You know, Halloween only comes once a year. You can take one day out of your very busy, very hectic schedule and focus on your children. Be a part of their costume. Um, you know, when they dress up, tell them they look great. Follow them around and, and enjoy the Halloween door-to-door uh, -door trick or treating efforts with them. Be with your kids, love them, care for them, and don't forget to give them a hug today too. You know what, kids love that. And uh, friends, I'm gonna be back tomorrow with some really great stuff. I believe in you, and you know what, Today's going to be a fun day. Let's have a great day today. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's smile. Let's laugh. Let's talk with family. And let's all try to get along and just have the best day we possibly can. I care about you. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll get back on track with some more success talk tomorrow. But today I just wanted to talk about the holiday and remind you to focus on your family. I'll talk to you tomorrow, friends. Take care and have a wonderful and spooky Halloween holiday. Talk to you tomorrow.